Hello, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here at this conference. Thank you so much for having us, 7,000 Languages. My name is Stephanie Witkowski. I'm the executive director of the organization, and I'm here to talk to you about creating online language learning materials. I'm here to talk a little bit about our organization and how really we have a very accessible process for anybody who's interested in creating online language learning materials for their indigenous or endangered language. I just want to take a moment to acknowledge before we begin that I'm coming to you from Southern California from the ancestral homelands and territory of the Tongva and the Ahashman people. I want to acknowledge uh, the Tongva and the Ahashman people and the work that they continue to do to this day to preserve and revitalize their language and culture. Um, so excited to be here um, and to talk a bit more about our organization, 7,000 Languages. I'm going to talk a little bit about um, online language learning programs and software tools a bit more generally. There are a lot of tools out there and there's a lot to think about when it comes to creating online language learning materials for your indigenous or endangered language. I'm going to showcase the software that we use. Um, the software that we utilize has been generously donated by Transparent Language. So I'm going to show you what that software looks like and show you a little bit about how you can create similar language learning materials. So I'll show you some of the different activities and how we create lessons. So the mission of our organization, 7,000 Languages, is to empower communities around the world to teach, learn, and sustain their endangered languages. That's our mission statement. And I also want to talk a bit about our values. Our values are really at the core of what we do. They guide the work that we do. They guide our organization forward. And we really think that these are also important conversations to have with any organization that is working within an Indigenous space, and in particular, working with language and working with communities on their Indigenous or endangered languages. So I'm going to talk about each value in turn. Um, first, I want to talk about our value of empowerment and ownership. We believe that Indigenous languages and the materials created for those languages belong to the community of ancestors, speakers, and descendants of those languages. And we as 7,000 languages seek to cooperatively develop resources for each community to self-determine the future of their language. So at our core, we believe that these languages and any language learning material belongs to the community, does not belong to our organization or any other organization that assists in the creation of those materials. And while we are pleased to come alongside communities and create these materials for their use, we fully believe in data sovereignty. And we believe that linguistic and language data belongs to the community forever and belongs to those ancestors. So we never copyright the courses that we create with the communities that we work with. The courses and the language materials themselves are able to be copyrighted by that community and all of the data is accessible to that community. Um, and we understand that it is up to the community to own the course and for the any language learning material to fill the needs of those community members. Respect and collaboration. We value the rights and traditions of others. But we approach our relationship as guests. We recognize the leadership of our partners. I think far too often organizations come in and they want to be the experts on what to do when it comes to language revitalization. We really believe that this work, this language preservation work and cultural preservation work, it's been happening for centuries, certainly long before this technology and certainly long before our organization was in existence. So we recognize that. We recognize the expertise and the leadership of the partners that we have the privilege to work with that have been doing this work since time immemorial and will continue to do this work even without us as 7,000 languages. So again, when we are working with a community, we really respect their knowledge about what is the best course of action for their language and for their culture. And we defer to our community partners as they create language learning resources in terms of how they want to present those 
those uh, materials, the language and the culture and ways of knowing and traditional beliefs. Um, that brings me to our next value, diversity and inclusion. We recognize the value and the importance of each and every language for their community. We understand that language is critical for communities and individuals in creating a connection to history and creating identity. And we also believe each and every language strengthens humanity as a whole. Therefore, each and every community deserves the opportunity to teach, learn, and sustain their language, regardless of where that language is spoken, who speaks that language, or even how many people speak that language. The language that is spoken by one or two people still deserves the opportunity to be taught and to sustain into the future because that language is incredibly valuable, just as valuable as any other language spoken on earth. That brings me to our last value, technology and community access. Communities in, in uh, the effort to teach, learn, and sustain their languages deserve to have access to those technologies and that support that will assist their language journeys. And that technology and sh support should reflect their cultural values. So we believe technology should reflect a community's culture, practices, and ways of knowing, and not the other way around. Far too often, it happens the other way around, that there's a piece of technology or that there's a tool and it's developed and then it's given to a community and the community is told, well, make your language fit this tool. Either come up with new words or figure out another way to, to talk about and think about your language, how you parse your language. Often tools have a very Western point of view in terms of thinking about nouns and uh, you know singular words as being the core of the language. When in truth, we know that there are so many languages with such rich grammar that you couldn't possibly encapsulate a, a single word uh, to be the translation of an utterance in that community or in that language. So we really recognize that we believe that the technology can and should bend to fit the languages that it serves and not the other way around. So those are a little bit of our values. We hope by talking through this a bit more, we spark conversation, we spark further debate, and we really believe that any organization that works with Indigenous communities should be able to speak about these values um, and answer questions that or, uh, communities may have regarding how their language will be used and um, how their culture will be respected. So just a little bit about some of the communities that we've worked with in the seven years that our organization has been around, we have created over 55 language courses in over 30 different languages. So these are some of our partners with which we've created courses with, uh, some of the languages that we've created courses with, and as well as some partners that we're currently working with. And there's many, many more that we're currently in the process with. Um, we're always eager to bring on new partners and we provide a significant number of trainings for free for partners around the world. How do we work with our partners? What does that relationship look like? And what do we as 7,000 languages do when we have a partnership? Well, the first thing that is critical to our relationships with our partners is to determine the community's goals for the language lessons and the language courses both from a linguistic perspective, what are the pieces of language that are critical to teach? What are the pieces of the grammar that a learner has to learn and know how to use effectively? But also from a cultural perspective, sometimes the first thing and the most important thing for a learner to be exposed to in a language course is actually quite grammatically complex, but it has cultural significance. So a lot of the courses we work on, for example, one of the first things that we're working on is a lesson on how to introduce yourself in the language, how to talk about who you are, who your family is, where you come from, because that's really culturally significant, even though it can be quite grammatically complex. But it's important to us that we meet the goals that the community has. We also provide our partners with curriculum development support um, as needed. Sometimes we have a partnership where they have a curriculum, there's textbooks, there's been language learning materials created. And so it's really just a matter of finding an online space to reach more learners. 
which is wonderful, but equally wonderful is an opportunity to work with a partner who wants to create that curriculum, who has the language materials, they know a bit about the grammar of the language, and they really want a thought partner in figuring out the best course of action to teaching this language and sharing it with additional learners. So we're really always pleased to provide that curriculum support. Of course, we share best practices regarding elicitation for vocabulary items, sentences, or grammars, or stories, uh, best practices for creating audio and video files, as well as editing audio. So like I said, there are best practices that are out there in our field of language documentation, language revitalization, but we always respect the practices and the ways of knowing of our partners. Probably most importantly is that we really train our partners on how to use the software that is so generously donated from Transparent Language. Um, certainly, we could just take a bunch of language data, pop it into the software, spit out a course, and say, here you go, good luck. But that is not what we want to do. We really, truly um, are on a mission to empower and to uplift communities and not just give them a finished product, but show them how to create more for themselves. So we want to teach our partners how to use the software, how to create language learning materials themselves, so that those materials can be created in perpetuity, even after a relationship with our organization is no longer as active. That being said, there's no timeline to our support. Once we built a partnership with a community or a tribal nation or a group of individuals, we will work with them as long as they need. So if our partners need our support, we will be there. If we can't provide the support ourselves, we will try to find another organization that is well-respected and trusted that can. So an example is we have a lot of community partners who create online learning courses with us. And what they would love to do in addition to that is create companion dictionaries, which is a great resource, a great tool for languages that are revitalizing or preserving their indigenous or endangered languages. But we don't create dictionaries. However, we have a really strong partnership with another organization that does. So we do absolutely everything we can to ensure that those communities can also access those resources. So I want to talk a little bit now about why. Why might a community choose to create online language learning materials? Because not every community sees that as a piece of their language revitalization work, and we respect that. Creating online language learning resources may not be part of a community's language revitalization journey or may not be part of their immediate or future goals, and that's perfectly fine. There's so much work that's being done in the language revitalization space that doesn't in, utilize internet or uh, computer technology at all. And the languages are still being passed down effectively from generation to generation. So this is not the only way in which you can go about teaching, learning, and sustaining your language. However, a lot of communities do decide to create online language learning materials to support the work that they're already doing with their language and their culture. So I want to talk about some of those reasons. Some communities choose to create online language learning uh, materials to reinforce and strengthen the language that is being learned in conversation or in community. One of our partners, they uh, bring elders into the classroom to speak to students once a week. And then when the elders are not there the other four days a week, the students are able to use online language learning resources to kind of reinforce and strengthen the uh, language that they had exposure to when the elder came into the classroom. Online language learning materials also support language learners who are not located near a centralized speech or signer community, right? So while having that exposure to speakers, signers, users of an indigenous or endangered language, is wonderful. So often, especially nowadays, individuals move out of a community or an entire language community itself might be in diaspora or might be a bit more of an urbanized community where it is challenging to get people together. We all saw during the pandemic as well, we just simply couldn't convene and meet in the same way. We had to utilize the internet. 
So online language learning materials help to support those learners that aren't able to access sort of this community of language use that is happening. Online language learning materials also encourage new users to feel comfortable in the language. I'm not sure about you, but for me, language learning is really challenging. It's hard to learn a new language. And sometimes there are additional challenges when we're talking about a language that was your ancestral language, that was a language that was in a lot of context taken away from family members and they were abused if they chose to speak their language. We know that that is the truth for so many indigenous and endangered languages. And with that comes some pain and a little bit of guilt. Also with it comes resilience and hope for the language in the future. But certainly there's a lot there when one begins a language learning journey of their ancestral language. And sometimes it can feel really daunting and it can feel scary. I'm scared when I learn languages too, but online language learning materials can help create that space, that space to get comfortable, that space to make mistakes, because you have to make mistakes when you're learning language, but you need to have a safe place to do it in. So you can be at home, you can be in a quiet room, listening to the language, speaking the language out loud, and that often will help motivate and help a speaker feel comfortable or a language user feel comfortable to then join an active language community. So all of these points, I'm sure you noticed a theme that we recognize language survival is, is dependent on the language being spoken or used by a group of people in an active language community. Online language learning is not going to revitalize a language by itself. That really language is about connecting with others. And so we hope that the work that we do can lift that work up, strengthen and support it. But we also very much recognize that communities are creating language spaces, creating language community that is active and engaged. And that is at the core of language revitalization and language preservation work. So we really like acknowledge and respect that work that is happening. We hope to come alongside it. So let's talk a little bit more about online language learning. So there's a lot of information on this slide. I wanna point you over to this comparison of course features. This is an amazing resource that was put out by Carrie Chu and Associates, um, part of a beautiful guide, which I wholeheartedly recommend to anybody who's considering creating online language learning materials. The guide is called Learning in Relation, a guide to creating online Indigenous language courses that center Indigenous ways of knowing and being. This is a fantastic resource. Carrie Chu looks at obviously several platforms, and there's also a number of case studies with uh, specific communities who've created these online Indigenous language courses and their experience creating them. So I can't recommend that resource enough please see, search it out and it's free. But a really cool comparison that Carrie uh, put together was this comparison of features. And so um, along here, you see these different platforms. Here we are 7,000 languages, but there's other language learning platforms, Duolingo, Mango Languages, Memorize, Rosetta Stone. And then it goes ahead and it compares the capabilities of these softwares um, and what, what these different platforms include. Do they have capability to include video? Are there images? Can you include audio? All of them can. How about a text-based language lesson? Or do they have the ability to do assessment? They all do. So this is really critical when you're deciding on a platform to go with, because we are not the only platform in town. There's a lot of great language learning softwares and more come out um, regularly. But it's important that you sort of look at those, those pieces. Are they going to be able to handle the features that I want in my online language learning course? There's several other factors to consider, such as data sovereignty, um, how accessible the technology is, um, whether or not you have access to the back end and you can create materials yourself. So there's a lot to consider. Another amazing resource is put up by the First People's Cultural Council and it's called Check Before You Tech. So I also suggest you look at that resource before you begin working with any organization. 
I also want to talk a little bit more generally about online language learning resources because there's a lot that you can do with it. Um, there's so many different types of learning materials or courses you could create. You could choose to go the route of creating a beginner and intermediate and advanced courses. You could create courses that are completely conversation based. So it's all about situations. Um, you know, it's all about phrases and conversations that are held, maybe even throughout the day. Um, you can also have materials that are based on stories and other original text. So you can use that as the anchor and then teach some vocabulary items or some grammatical items that are embedded in that story. So beginning with an original text and teaching language from that point of view. <clears throat> more and more we're learning about land-based learning and how critical a connection between land and language is and how to infuse that in the language learning materials you create. There's a lot of technology that is now able to support land-based learning as well, um, which seems funny to do online, right? But it's there. The technology is catching up. Of course, you can also create courses and lessons that connect with specific practices or maybe even the times of the year and what is happening along the calendar or specific traditions. So you could create an entire course that talks about a culturally significant tradition or practice. And there's more. This is not an exhaustive list. Really, any idea you have to create a course can be done with the technology that is available. So here's some of the things that you could include when you create online language learning courses. You can, of course, include vocabulary items such as vocabulary words, phrases. You can include full stories, full text. You can include audio, images, videos, and then translations into several other languages as well. So those are some of the pieces that you might want to include when you are teaching your language. So there's established language learning platforms that already have packages ready to roll out. Rosetta Stone, Duolingo, essentially that's where we fall under. There's tons of free generators online as well. You don't have to work closely with the company like Memrise, Anki, or Quizlet. It's a free software. You plug in your data and often they generate like flashcards or other games. That's a great way to go. Um, of course, there's also hiring independent developers. They can create a course that is exactly to your specifications. That tends to be a bit more of an expensive option, and there's a lot to do to ensure that your software and your technology will continue to be maintained into the future. Um, you want to ensure that even after you stop working with that developer, that there's still technology support for you moving forward. Um, again, a lot to think about, but there's a lot of options and surely there will be one to fit your goals. I'm gonna talk more about what we do at 7,000 Languages though. What does our software platform look like and what can you do with us? Through our software, we feel like a single elder, such as Elizabeth Keating, the last fluent speaker of Holokachuk, can teach hundreds of students. And so we really strive to amplify the voices of the elders and the voices of community leaders. Um, we know that our community partners know what is best for them and their community. They know what they need. And so we use our technology to complement their ongoing work. So this is an example of um, work that we did with a Holika Chuck partner, um, Doyon Foundation. So we recorded Elizabeth Keating and then we created a whole conversation based course around conversations that happen in Paula Kuchuk. It's really cool and you can check it out for free on our website 7000.org. A couple other things to say about our technology. Here's some of the features. Here's some of the things that you can do with our technology that once again we use transparent language software and it's donated to organization. That means that we get to work with our partners and provide this software completely for free. I'm going to show you the software in just a minute. We'll go through a demo, but um, I want to talk through what some of the features are as well. The software can work on computers, phones, and tablets, laptops, desktops. Uh, there are over 40 different activities. We'll go through some of them today. It's a lot. It's an incredibly robust software, so oftentimes a big piece of the work that we do with our partners is figuring out which activities are going to best support their language goals for their learners. There are vocabulary activities, tons of them, where you can also include images. Um, and when we say vocabulary, we mean a word, a phrase, or a sentence. The software can support all of that. 
There are ways in which you can include grammatical and cultural notes. So slideshows are one way in which you can present information to your learner and really kind of expose them to not just the linguistic pieces of your language, but sort of what's embedded in the language from a cultural point of view. But also there's several activities where you can begin to expose your learner to grammar and also uh, reinforce that grammar through some really fun activities. So if you like teaching grammar, that capability is there as well. There's pronunciation practice activities. Those are some of my favorites. I'll definitely show you those today. Conversation practice activities. So again, that sort of embedding language in real context and real situations. Of course, this uh, software can support, as you saw before, so text, audio, and video. Um, it works offline um, via sort of audio flashcards. So you can use it uh, on a smartphone device. You can use it offline and you can kind of go through and listen and read uh, the flashcards. Um, and then there's a whole suite of teacher tools, which are really cool. So if you are a teacher, you can set up virtual classes, you can assign lessons to students, you can also uh, view reports um, and create online assessments. You can also create materials that are strictly for your class. So as a teacher, it's, it's awesome. It's kind of like a one sort of place for you to put all of your language learning for your students and then also keep track. I want to talk about some of our program highlights as well. So it's really important to us that this is accessible, as you saw in our values, which is why this program is completely free to communities. We never, ever charge communities for access to the software or an opportunity to receive training from our organization, 7,000 Languages. The community owns the copyright to all of their language data, and they also have a copyright on the course itself. So, um, you know, obviously transparent language software owns the intellectual property of this software, but all of that content and the makeup of the course itself belongs to the community. It doesn't belong to us, 7,000 languages, and it doesn't belong to our technology partner either, transparent language. We recognize and respect that that is the intellectual property and the rights of the community, the speakers, or the tribal nation that created those materials. And so with that, any language data can be exported, uh, both raw data, so like raw images, raw audio files, or formatted data can be exported using like XML um, or Excel templates for other projects. We encourage our partners to use the data they collect for language learning courses in other projects. We want you to be able to create as many different materials and resources you need in order to make sure your language thrives. So we never ever retain any exclusivity in the language that you provide us. And we don't retain a copyright to it. And of course, the courses are available for free on 7000.org. So that means you can provide easy access to all of your learners on our website, they can quickly access it, but um, so can other people who are curious about learning more about the language and the culture. Um, you can also host the course on other websites. So you are more than welcome to host your course on your website, share links on Facebook groups you might have. So um, again, it's completely for free for everybody. I'm going to talk just a little bit more about our organization and some of the work we do, and then we're going to look at a demo of a course. Um, but I want to pause here because I think this quote is really beautiful. Hearing our everyone speak our languages is the most beautiful music, like all of the birds singing together to make an amazing song. So I love that. I love that sort of um, importance and that visualization of how, how critical it is that languages continue to thrive generation after generation. And that quote is from Sarah Silas, who is the last native speaker at Benti Kanaga. And we have a Benti Kanaga course on our website as well, um, if you would like to check it out and you get to hear Sarah. As we move forward to the future, we're excited to talk about some other things that we're working on. So we're currently working on a 7,000 languages app, which will not be reliant on internet technology or work on all cellular data. It'll be for language users and language learners alike. 
And I also want to talk about a really cool fellowship program that we have been doing. This is our second year doing it. We're just about to bring our fellows on. So this is a paid opportunity for advocates who have been working on their endangered language. It is a 10 week program. It's delivered in a cohort model. This year, we're starting June 2023. Um, we might consider a spring cohort in spring of 2024, so be on the lookout for that. Last year, we brought on a couple interns, and they, were, they created a Cherokee course, a LAS, and a Kikuku course, as well as this really amazing immersive Ojibwe mapping course. We're just about to bring on our new cohort of fellows here in 2023, and they will work on Uma language, Mi'kmaq, Bororo, Ekpeye, Kaunk, and Natchez language. So we're so, so excited to um, have this opportunity to really honor the work that advocates are doing by paying them, compensating them for their time and creating additional language learning materials. And not only that, but really sharing the expertise that we have um, gained in this uh, realm of language documentation and language revitalization. So I'm going to talk more now. I'm going to stop sharing this screen. I'm going to stop sharing my presentation. I'm actually going to show you what the software looks like. So this is our website, 7000.org. Head over to our website. Check out some of the languages that we have. They're all listed here. You can also scroll down and see them here. You can click on any of these languages and you can learn them for free. So you just click on any language you're interested in, scroll down, and you'll see a button right here to learn that language. I also want to take you to the Partner With Us page. So up here at the top, Partner With Us, this is where you can learn a lot more about our partnerships, what that looks like. You can read our copyright policy, read through our values once again, and you can also do a demo of a language learning course, which I'm going to show you right now. So we have popped over to our partner, Transparent Language, to look at their software. Um, over here where it says Menu, this is a list of all the different types of activities you can include. So there's 38 here, but there's even a couple more. So like I said, there's nearly 40. So we can take a look at some of the different types of activities. This is in German language. I do not speak German language. So um, hopefully you will have a good time listening to me practice my German. Some activities like the slideshow, like I said, present information to your learner in a sort of a slideshow format. So this is a great way to introduce them to the course, teach a component of the grammar, or showcase a component of the culture. We also can present text. Um, the first thing that this, this course introduces is a, a text of somebody introducing themselves. So this is in German, but it says, hello, my name is Sarah, I'm 17 years old, and I live in Berlin. I go to school. I don't speak German, but I, I'm picking up on this. Um, I have a mother, a father. I have a father, a mother, a sister, and a brother. I think I did okay. So you're presented with some text, and that's going to come back. We're going to spend more time practicing this text. Um, another really cool activity that I want to show you is this image explorer. So with the image explorer, you can either use a flat image like this or you can include a 360 image, which I love. So you can move up and down, and you can move side to side around the image. And when you're presented with the image, you see these little hot spots, these little dots. When I click on them, Die Schwester. I'm presented with a vocabulary item. It automatically plays. I can play it again. Die Schwester. Or I can press this little turtle and go slow. Die Schwester. So anytime you see a little turtle, it means you can slow it down. You can include vocabulary items in this activity or just general information. And so that's a great way to just maybe present a piece of text or even a little bit of conversation or a language prompt. You can move through multiple images and you can even link them to one another. So I can go from the house to the family. So you could imagine a scenario where maybe you could walk through a home and you could be pointing out different vocabulary items around the home or different prompts, things you might say in a kitchen, for example. Maybe you want to have a prompt that says, what's for dinner, right? So you can do all of that and really create much more of that immersive experience where you're not relying on a translation in another language. 
You're really moving through a situation or moving through a location. And then you can also locate it. So you can also, you'll be presented with a vocabulary word and then you click on the right button. Okay. Your learner is always given immediate feedback unless it's an assessment. In that case, the learner does not receive immediate feedback, but rather they receive feedback after the assessment is over. Die Mutter. So you hear the vocabulary items Die Mutter. right away. I'm sure this activity looks really familiar. You're presented with a vocabulary item in the language in German, and you pick the correct image. Again, I get that immediate feedback. Die Schwester. So another great activity to expose your learner to the language without being reliant on a translation in another language. Another activity that I really want to show you that I love is pronunciation practice. So this activity is going to use my microphone. I'm going to enable it. I'm going to testing one, two, three, test my audio. Der Bruder. Let's try this one. Der Bruder. Der Bruder. So this gave me a little bit of a scoring on the wheel. So you want to get to the green. You can listen to areas to review. So it's highlighting the deer and the brood. It's also pretty quiet just for me and my computer. Um, so once again, you can listen. You can see the waveform. You can listen uh, to yourself and see your waveform after you record. And then there's a little scoring dial over here that tells you about how well you did. I'm going to show you one more activity, which is newer and really, really great for, again, presenting language in a situation, in a context. This one in particular presents a conversation. You can have two speakers or more, and you can have as many lines of dialogue as you want. So I can listen to one line at a time. Hallo. As slowly. Hallo. Ich heiße Hannah. Und wie heißt du? Or I can play the entire conversation. Hallo. Hi. Ich heiße Hannah. Und wie heißt du? Ich heiße Sarah. And then the next activity Hallo. is to practice the conversation yourself. So I listen to Hannah, and then I'm going to record her line. Hello. Hello. So it's a little quiet, but you can hear I said that line. And then I continue. So again, it's my turn to record that line. Let me listen to it again. Ich heiße Hannah. Und wie heißt du? I'm going to try. Ich heiße Hannah. I did okay. So I can re-record or I can move on. So I love this because again, you're practicing, you're outputting language and it's in the context of a conversation. You can also embed videos. So they have to be hosted on YouTube or Vimeo or something like that, but then you can embed your video into this software platform. There's also some really cool activities where, once again, we can go back to that text and we can, for example, put our text in order. So we can, we were presented with that whole text in the beginning, the introduction, and now we can put that text in the right order, or we can use a paragraph fill in the blank. So this one, for example, you have to put in the right word uh, for my, depending on whom we're speaking about, my father, my brother, my mother, or my sister. Oh, I did not so great, but that's okay. I can keep trying so I can switch it out. Let me see if I get this right now. And check. Awesome. So I'm learning as I'm using these activities. All right, there's also activities that are really cool for using it in a classroom. So this is meant to be guided by an instructor where you can highlight specific words. I might say, oh, highlight the masculine form of my along with the noun. There we go in yellow and bring my students up to, to do this activity with me. These are just some of the activities. As I said, there are so many. So that was a really quick jaunt through all of the different activities that are there. I hope you enjoyed my presentation. 
It was my pleasure to talk to you a little bit about 7,000 Languages, our organization, and what we do. Speak more about our values and how we go about our work, because I think that is truly critical to doing this work, as well as I hope you had fun looking at the software and talking and thinking a bit more about the technology tools that are available to you. If you have any questions or would like to work with us more at 7,000 Languages, we would love to hear from you. So please send us an email to info at 7,000.org. I can also show you on our website. You can go to contact right up here and it's gonna take you to a little contact us form. I'm gonna scroll all the way down. You can put in your name, email, optional phone number and write us a message here. We'd love to hear from you. Please stay in touch because we would love to work with you. All right, I hope you enjoy the rest of your conference and thank you again for having me. Take care.